Well, in this series we of clips, we will be dealing with different teaching aspects. Today we're going to concentrate on types of lessons and the first type uh, that is presentation will be the main focus in this clip. Now, what lesson types do you know? We know different types. For example, the one I have just mentioned, such as presentation. But there are many other type of lessons. For example, we can think of practice. We can think of consolidation lessons where the tasks may be more demanding than in a simple practice lesson. And we may think of revision and testing. Now, these lesson types, of course, have to do with uh, let's say the goals of the teacher. Today we are going to um, deal with presentation lessons. If the teacher is to introduce new language, it may be the case that she wants to include grammar. For example, we can think of a simple present daily routine. But it may be the case that we want to teach daily routine connected to habits. Um, we may think of frequency, that is to say the address of frequency will be included in this presentation. Or it may be that we want the students to learn how to ask about others' routines. Now. The presentation may focus on vocabulary and perhaps then move on to a grammatical point. But no matter the order, the teacher may do this presentation by exposing the students to the new language. Now, as regards function, when we speak about presenting a function, we think of a situation, such as giving advice, or making or asking for suggestions. Why not? And last but not least, pronunciation. Well, in the pronunciation uh, presentation lessons, the teacher may be restricted to three areas, that of sounds, consonant of vowel sounds, or stress, or intonation patterns. Well, as you can see in this wall chart, the teacher has included visual stimuli. You can see the emojis. And below them, there are verbs that have to do with likes and dislikes. Now, the students may be requested to expand on more words related to likes and dislikes, as you can see in enjoy, prefer, this, detest, and even low, which are verbs that are not as common as like, love, hate, and don't like. So, most of the visual stimuli, right, is leading the students to express themselves communicatively. In this slide, you can see jobs. The teacher may intend to prompt the students to say the jobs they know, and then move on to, uh, let's say, discover or expose the students to new ones. She may be, uh, let's say, using the students' participation to scaffold language, that is to say, to build new language together with the help of the students. Again, here you can see visual stimuli, a picture. The picture of an airport. Well, this uh, has to do with the situation, and the teacher probably wants to introduce how you check in at the airport. So, most of the language input would be in the format of a dialogue that the students may be requested to read or may be requested to listen to. And then they will be learning chunks of language that 
help them work out situations such as these. Perhaps when we think of um, pronunciation, we believe that it could be restricted in the way it could be introduced. Well, in fact, there, are, there aren't many uh, different tasks you can do when dealing with pronunciation. But, of course, there are two ways in which you can introduce, um, let's say, pronunciation um, aspects, such as sounds, stress, and intonation. You may give the students examples and the students will work out the sound you are focusing on, or you may give the students, why not, the phonetic transcription of a sound and then illustrate it with examples. In both cases, the students will be exposed to limited language input, which then has to be, of course, included in context to make it have sense. Well, when we introduce new language, we can do it in two different ways. In the previous slides, you had seen that there were, uh, let's say, different instances of teaching, where there was visual stimuli, where there were words that we call them prompts, or where there um, were sounds or patterns for students to work out. Well, in fact, the way you do it much depends on a pedagogical decision. And you may decide to uh, take turns in terms of induction and deduction. What is induction? Well, the teacher may expose the students to input such as a reading text or a listening text it could be pictures with prompts, and then, little by little, guide the students to discover the new language. Now, the other way around, it would be to show the students directly the structure or the vocabulary list, or why not the extract of a function or a phonetic sound for them to focus, and then ask the students to recognize it, notice it in context. And that is what we call deduction. They are two valid methods of introducing new language. And it helps if we vary them so as to avoid being predictable by introducing new language in the same way all the time. In this case, I want you to think a bit about this classroom situation. This has been taken from a book called Learning Teaching, written by James Scrivener from the Macmillan Books for Teachers. Check this description of an extract of a lesson and describe fully the type of presentation it is. Lee is standing at the front of a class of 11 young adult students. He's introducing going to as a way of talking about predicted events in the future. He has put up a large wall chart picture on the board showing a policeman watching a number of things in the town center. The picture seems to immediately suggest a number of going to sentences such as they are going to rob the bank, he isn't going to stop and it's going to fall down. Lee is pointing at parts of the picture and encouraging learners to risk trying to say a going to sentence. When they do, he gently corrects them and gets them to say it again better. Sometimes he gets the whole class to repeat an interesting sentence. It is interesting that he's actually saying very little himself. Most of his interventions are nods, gestures, facial expressions, and one or two word instructions or short corrections. Generally, the learners are talking rather than the teacher. 